Hello everybody, my name is Jan Stema, I'm chairman and co-founder of CrowdStore. And hello everyone, my name is Artur Gesari, I'm head of SME. Uh, welcome to the new episode of 10 in 10. Uh, today we will be answering questions uh, mostly related to the new segment SME, uh, role, experience and plans of Artur's, uh, and also about the CrowdStore equity campaign. So let's start. So first question, as the head of SME, what will be your responsibilities in CrowdStore? And are you also a shareholder in the company? So as a head of SME, I'm responsible for implementing and automating SME lending. So SME stands for small medium enterprise lending. So that you as an investor will have more possibilities to invest. Second, you'll be able to earn more money. And third, you as an investor will understand how the risk assessment and due diligence works. From other side, my job is to make sure that hundreds and thousands of small medium companies across the European Union get access to quick growth capital. In order to implement that, I'm here responsible for implementing most up-to-date technologies and second, fully automating borrowers' risk assessment. And answering the second part of the question, no, I'm not the shareholder of the company. Question number two. I assume there are a lot of small to medium businesses, loans issued by Monify. Do you plan to make a separate section on CrowdStore for that? Maybe some more compact view or advanced filtering, as there will be tens, if not hundreds of those. Yes, you're right. So when we implement the automated risk assessment, there'll be more borrowers applying for a platform, and you will see a list of tens, even hundreds of simultaneous investment projects available for the investment. Because it will be very hard to go through all the hundreds of projects, it will be a separate SME lending section with a lot of filters in it. So you can choose the projects based on the country, on the industry, on the risk of the project. You can choose the revenue, the, the financial ratios of the social impact of the project. Or you can simply choose the maturity and the interest rate that you are ready to invest. Actually, this brings a big diversification possibility for investors. Because what I always advise is to invest less amount in more projects. And with an automated SME lending, it will be a huge possibility for you as an investor to have. Next question. How will automation affect due diligence and is it trustworthy comparing to human intervention? Now first, we use the structured data to analyze the SMEs. Lucky for us, every borrower that applies has a track record of filling the annual reports for many years in a row. So we have access to financial reports as P&L and balance sheet. Second, every borrower sends us a bank statement for the last 12 months. We can use those data to see all their partners, creditors and debtors and cash flow movements. And third, we use the local credit bureaus where you can find information on the late payments, on the borrower and on the guarantor as well. So combining all these three databases, we apply the automated scoring and actually we can quickly reject around 80% of the customers that apply on the platform. Now the rest 20%, yes, it will be automated, but we will have people, real people with financial background and experience double checking the results of the system so that all the investments you get on the platform are carefully chosen, even though they are automated. And yes, there will be a less risk involved in the automation. So the next question, uh, will projects like, like those of today continue to exist, the ones with higher uh, human intervention? Uh, yes, we will keep on uh, working on such type of projects. Uh, we see big potential in movies, in concerts, in, in, in uh, energy sector, um, in uh, distressed uh, asset acquisition. These are projects on one hand where uh, we can offer investors a higher success fee, so investors can, can, can earn more. On the other hand, these are projects where uh, people have option not only to earn funds, uh, but also to, to get some satisfaction about the product which was in the end developed. Uh, the movie is a very good example in this situation. So we will call these projects as CrowdStore specialized investments and you will be able to see them on, on platform. So the next question, are there more rounds planned for equity campaign? How many and where can I find information about it? Uh, yes, there will be more rounds. One round is open at the moment. Uh, what I can say is that the final round will be on December 2020. When round is open, you have access to white paper and all the information is there. 
So the next question, if the minimum investment to convert loan to shares is 5,000 euros, is it possible to invest 1,000 euros in five separate rounds to have access to, pot to a potential shareholder? Um, yes, you can uh, invest uh, 1,000 uh, euros in five different rounds. Uh, the most important is to have a 5,000 euro exposure uh, when, when, when the last round is, uh, has finalized. What happens if I become a shareholder and I want to sell shares that I own? Will this be possible and how can this be made? Yes, you will, uh, you will be able to sell these shares which you own, but uh, with two conditions. Uh, first, all the other shareholders in this SPV will have uh, first-hand purchase rights. And uh, the next, uh, we will, you will have to present us who is the buyer and you will have to get permission from us that we accept the, this person as, as a buyer of your shares. The next question, what is going to happen uh, to Limbiscuit concert and uh, festival service provider? All the concerts and exhibitions are currently being rescheduled. Uh, the potential dates are uh, starting from October, November this year until summer of, of year 2021. Um, the only way uh, to get loan and, and interest uh, back is by rescheduling the, the concerts. Uh, if project is simply cancelled, uh, part of funds which are spent on the organizational process cannot be recovered in case if there, there are no income. So uh, we do not support such approach. So the next question is, what is the relation that Monifying Group here has and how the outstanding agreements are handled? Considering Mr. Jaisari's past relation with Groupier, will the screening of partner will also be done with more due diligence? So first, uh, Monifying Groupier has a long-term relationship that started back in 2017, early 2018. And I'm satisfied with the partnership. But in October, September, October 2019, Monify has stopped placing new loans on the Groupier platform, while it continued putting its loans on Viventor Group, and then it connected to the Iowa group as well. So you need to understand that Monify is a closed joint stock company and me as a board member of the company, I have some rights and obligations. And as a closed company, it doesn't need to express any of its opinion or disclose any of its information with regards to the partnership it has to the different companies. The same goes with the group here. In the partnership agreements, we have a clause on the confidentiality that prohibits me on saying anything good or bad on the partnership and the agreements. The only thing I can say is that we will continue fulfilling our obligations so that investors who invested in Monify loans through the group year will get their money back. Just the question is how much time it will take. But me, as a board member and CEO of the Monify, I will continue doing the best I can in order to give back the money to the investors. The next question is, how you will be able to manage the workload in Crowd the Store and Monify? Now first, it's important to understand that I'm working more than 40 hours per week, and it's like for the last 10 years. So I always had several businesses and projects running simultaneously. Currently, I have a financial consultancy company where we make business plans, financial models, and pitch decks. Second, I'm running seminars, both online and offline, where there are hundreds of entrepreneurs going there and we're teaching them how to rethink the business model. And third, I'm a CEO on Monify. Monify has stopped lending any new loans and stopped its development. And currently, the most important thing is to work with the current loan book and to give back all the funds to its creditors. This is my main responsibility and I'll be there with the Monify until I fulfill that obligation. And it doesn't take me much time to do that. Second, you need to understand I have enough financial experience and I have five years experience in SME lending. That means that if there's anyone trying to do an SME automation, it could take them years to do. While for me, it's a you know, question of one month. Now with the Crowder store, I'm putting most of my energy, most of my time and most of my experience in the company because I believe in Crowder store and I believe that the automated SME lending together with the best reputation of the Crowder store, its platforms and the loyalty that goes from the investors. Now together we can achieve the best results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching and uh, see you in the next episode of 10 in 10.